Hello and welcome to today's tutorial for Engineering 7000 Ocean Systems Design. Today's tutorial is on basic hull design using Rhino 3D. Today we're going to complete a basic overview of hull form design tools using Rhino by creating a primitive hull form. We're going to surface that form using the sweep to rails function and then apply the hydrostatics command for preliminary volumes and centers of the shape or primitive that we've created. This lecture is adapted from a tutorial originally given by Dr. Dave Murren in 2007 at Memorial University. Uh, the objective of today's lecture is to increase your understanding of how to use a popular CAD software to generate a basic hull form. By the end of today's lecture, you should be able to identify essential Rhino commands used for hull form design and create a primitive displacement hull using interpolated curves and rail sweeping surface commands. All right, I'm gonna begin by opening by the latest version of Rhino that I have running on my system, Rhino 6. And once it loads, I'm going to select large object meters. This is just going to make the units more conducive to work with for building a ship. I'm going to expand the top plane by double clicking on the title bar top. Then I'm going to go ahead and create a line originating at zero. And I'm going to enter 135 meters to define the length of the line. And then by holding down the shift key and simply selecting the direction I want to project the line, I'm going to go ahead and create that line in orthogonally to my origin. With that finished, I'm now going to create the shear line for my world's longest canoe. I'm going to go to Curve, Freeform, Interpolate Points, and that's simply going to allow me to select a number of points along the length of the uh, desired curvature and create some sort of interpolated curve from those points. Uh, in this case, you can see that I'm actually trying to observe a beam of about 20 meters total, so that's a half breadth of 10 meters. Uh, so you can see I've created uh, two points somewhere in the neighborhood of that uh, 10 meter intersection on the grid, and then I've closed it off at the end point of my center line, and now I've defined uh, a basic uh, curvature for the shear line of my vessel. By selecting that curve, I can now leave the top plane, again by double clicking on the top title bar, and uh, enter the front plane. And now by using the command move, and then selecting a point to move from, again I'm going to choose the origin point just because it's easy to work with, and entering a distance of 10, I can define that I want to move that plane 10 meters in any direction. In this case I'm going to move it vertically. So now you can see on the screen I've basically created a baseline or keel line, which was that original line we drafted. And now I've also created the shear line located 10 meters above the keel or baseline. Uh, now I'm going to enter the line command. Uh, I'm going to choose the leftmost or bowmost point of that shear line I created. And I'm going to extend the line down to my baseline. Uh, you can see I'm just choosing an angle here that appeals to my eye. Uh, depending on the nature of your design, you may choose to do something different. In this case, I'm just going to choose a design that helps me create a bit of a stem uh, for my vessel. I'm now going to go to the aft end of the ship and I'm going to repeat that process. For transom based stern you may choose all sorts of different configurations. In this case I'm going to make a flat bottomed and uh, straight aft just demonstrating the process. Now the next step is to take away some of the very sharp edges that our lines projections have created. So I'm going to use the fillet command and select the baseline and my stem and sort of just round off that front edge, just creating a bit more of a hydrodynamic appearance to the bow of the vessel. Alright, so now I need to define 
uh, the bulk or the breadth of the vessel. So using a polyline command, I'm just going to uh, go up to my perspective plane here and choose uh, a point on the shear line curve. Um, you can see the command near coming up and that's going to select uh, some sort of point. I'm going to be careful not to select the actual points of the curve because as we used an interpolated curve, they may not actually lie on the line of the vessel, so you may not get intersections. And now extending downwards in my right hand plane, you can see I'm just going to go ahead and create some rough curvature that sort of creates a, a beam for my vessel and extends down to my baseline. You don't have to be overly precise uh, with these curves, they're just rough curves of form that we're uh, putting in to rough out our shape and we're going to clean those up shortly. Uh, for now what you really want to pay attention to is that you're selecting points that are on the line and then extending down in a straight plane uh, until you intersect perpendicularly with your baseline. All right, now that we've roughed in our curves, I'm going to go up to the curve menu and choose a freeform interpolate curve again. I'm just going to go ahead and trace the path of the curves that I've previously constructed. And on the screen in front of you, you can see that all that's really doing is projecting a much smoother curve uh, for the roughed in shape that we previously established. Now as you're using the interpolated curve function, one of the things you want to be careful of is that you don't create interpolated curves that are projecting too far below your baseline. If you think about how this is going to mirror in three dimensions, uh, you'll realize that if you project too far below the baseline, you're going to create all sorts of weird hydrodynamic effects around the keel. So the idea is really to have curves that terminate smoothly towards the keel. So you can already start to see that there's already a bit of a projection beneath the baseline plane, and we'll have to go into the design later and clean that up. But I'll show you how that's done when we get a little further into the design. For now, don't worry about it too much. Now that I've created some basic curves that describe the form of the ship, I'm going to go ahead and select all those curves individually. Uh, in case you've forgotten what that looks like, uh, you can choose any individual curve and then simply by pressing the shift key or holding down the shift key as you select your other curves, uh, you can simultaneously select your curves. And once we've got all those curves selected, I'm going to go into the layers tab on the right hand side of the screen and I'm simply going to change the layer. Uh, of those curves, putting them on their own separate layer, in this case the red layer one, and I'll rename that construction curves. The next step is to fair those curves, or really clean them up. Um, in this case, we're going to go to Curve, Curve Edit Tools, Fair, and I'm going to select the interpolated curves that we just built. And once they're all selected, I'll press Enter. And you can see it asks for a tolerance. I'm going to leave the tolerance at 1, press Enter again, and now my curves have been fared. Going to the Analyze toolbar, I can choose Analyze, Curve, and then Curvature Graph On. And this is going to allow me to choose the curves that I fared and actually take a look at the degree of curvature, which is just basically how the derivative changes along the length of the curve. And we can get a visual indication of just how fair our curves are. What we're looking for here is smooth, gradual transitions, uh, either growing or receding, and no huge spikes in the curvature. Uh, in this case, you can see by the faintness uh, of those white lines that we actually have uh, very fared curves. There's slow progressive change in the curvature throughout the length of the curve. Uh, so I'm pretty pleased with how the fairing process worked. 
So I'm not going to go into the individual control points and change any of the curvature myself. So now I'm going to deal with the projection below the baseline that I discussed earlier. You can see I'm going to drag a window around the points of concern, uh, selecting them all, and now I'm just going to select the point and drag it up, and it's going to move my curve above the baseline. And now that all my curves are projecting in such a fashion that they connect smoothly with the baseline without uh, projecting beneath the baseline plane, uh, I'm pretty happy with how that looks. Uh, I've left the curvature on it. You can see we still have well-fared curves throughout the vessel, so I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to go up to Curve, Curvature Graph Off in the Analyze Toolbar. You can see that's turned the curvature off, and now I'm ready to proceed with the rest of the build of my design. Now that we have these basic curves of form, we need to create some sort of surface, uh, or basically the skin of our hull. All right, so to create this surface, I'm going to use the sweep to rails command. Type in sweep to, and what that basically does is it passes a surface uh, along two rails or along two curves, and it follows as best as it can any cross-sectional curve to define the area. I've selected my stem, the three beam curves in my stern, and that will define the cross-sectional curves that the program uses to try and build the surface from. All right, so now that I've built my surface and taken a look at it, I'm pretty pleased with how it looks overall. I'm gonna change the surface to its own layer, uh, and I'm gonna call it hull surface. Where possible, I like to use a, a variety of layers that just helps me keep my construction lines, my surfaces, and my different projections straight so that I'm not accidentally deleting uh, various elements that I may need for later construction or revision of the model. So as I've said, the surface looks fair to me, but I'm going to get a better measure of that by going for the Analyze Surface uh, Curvature Analysis tool. And by selecting my surface and pressing Enter, uh, I can bring up my surface analysis. This comes up as a heat map showing uh, changes in the curve, and you're not really interested in the colors so much as you're interested in how quickly the colors change or whether there are any spikes in color in a region, because that indicates that there's a high degree of irregularity in the curvature of the surface. Taking a, a look at our model, you can see that the surface appears all green throughout the domain, suggesting that the curvature is quite smooth uh, from end to end. So overall, I'm quite happy with the fairness of this model, and I'm going to leave it alone. Now again, I can type in curvature analysis off to turn off my curvature tool, and the only thing left here is for me to take my hull form and mirror it about some plane. So using the, selecting the model and using the mirror command, I'm just going to select my longitudinal plane, my centerline plane. And remember, by selecting shift, you can keep the projection orthogonal. And press enter, and that's going to create a mirrored hull form. And if we look in the perspective plane there, we can see that the shape, um, maybe it's not the world's greatest canoe, but it'll serve the purpose for now. Uh, now by selecting the entirety of the surfaces, I can use the join command and I can join those surfaces together so the program will treat it as a single poly surface. So my hull model is now one continuous poly surface. And I can use this model to get some basic hydrostatics from the program. So I'm going to type in the command hydrostatics, and it's going to ask me to choose hydrostatic options. Uh, you can see the option for waterline elevation. So I'm going to push W to indicate that I want to select where the waterline is going to be. And I'm going to ask Rhino to perform the calculation as if the waterline was at an elevation of 8 meters relative to my baseline. So I type in 8 and press enter. It brings up my hydrostatics options, and you can see that the 8 has been entered for the waterline elevation. Just by pressing enter again, it calculates my hydrostatics. You can see it gives me some basic information, my volume of displacement, uh, the center of buoyancy, the wetted surface area, the length along the waterline, the maximum waterline beam, my water plane area, and the center of flotation of my geometry. So this has been a really quick overview into how to do some basic hull form creation uh, using Rhino. 
In the next video, we're going to discuss how to take this hull form and create a basic lines plan from the design. And with those tools and some practice, you should have the basic skills necessary in order to complete the hull form creation of assignment number one. As always, if you've got any questions, leave them in the comments or send me an email. Uh, I'm always happy to get the questions. If you have any ideas or feedback for how we can improve the video or what corrections need to be made, or if you need any clarification on the instructions, uh, feel free to shoot me an email. Uh, I love to get the feedback. It helps make these videos better. And it's always good to know that you guys are watching them and participating in the process. Thanks very much.